Uh, my name is Leslie Judd and my executive card number is 405318. I've got to go to Miami on business. Uh, can you give me some details of flights, please? I'll just check the availability for you, won't you, if you mind? An airline wants to be able to respond quickly and accurately to a customer. And that's why they're investing heavily in improving yes, their computer on. systems. British Airways flight leaving Heathrow at 11.20. British Airways have over 450 terminals in this one Heathrow reservation centre alone. The operators have virtually instant access to the database and passenger handling systems. They make over 3 million bookings a year. Yet reservations is only one part of a highly complex operation. The airline has 160 planes flying to over 70 countries. As a new jumbo can cost $100 million, the time in the air has to be kept to a maximum and the time on the ground to a minimum. Modern airlines work on very narrow profit margins and they have to be very carefully and efficiently coordinated. All the operations of the airline are planned and monitored by an operations control centre. The plans drawn up here spread out to affect all aspects of the airline. Timescales vary enormously. In the maintenance hangars, the routine servicing and engineering work has to be organised months in advance. On the other hand, the so-called ground operations, the baggage, food and so on, need instant access to information right up to the moment of takeoff. At the same time, the system has to be fully flexible to respond to sudden changes in demand, bad weather, air traffic congestion and much more. There are advantages of scale for a big airline, but only if it is run efficiently. The difference between profit and loss can depend on how well it deploys and monitors its resources. The management information system is one key to survival in today's cutthroat airline business. BA's computer system is already one of the biggest in Europe and it's growing at over 30% a year. The typical pattern is more electronic systems and fewer management and administrative staff. The systems run on an array of 12 mainframes. Together they can handle 125 million instructions per second. There are over 800 disk drives, each with between 300 and 600 megabytes of storage. Yet any item of information can be retrieved from the data banks in less than 1 20th of a second. And still that's not enough to meet future plans. Computer systems are now being used as a competitive weapon in the battle for customers. Good morning. Can I have your tickets and your passports, please? Thank you. The airline is hoping to get ahead of its rivals by using the computer network to improve customer service at, say, the check-ins. Well, the system already knows about me from when I reserved my ticket. And that's what information networks are really all about. Collecting information, storing it, and getting it to those people who need it. As check-in assistants spend less time on the terminals, they can be more attentive to the needs of the passengers. And that's good for business. And the information about all the passengers will follow us right through the journey. It's been calculated that a 747 takes on 28,000 items for a single trip. The computer system has been used to schedule personnel and equipment for the ground operations without wasted time and effort. The briefings for the flight crew are prepared in advance on a computer system which calculates the most efficient route to give the minimum fuel consumption, the minimum operating costs and the minimum time. The system saves hours of routine work and the full briefing is available to the crew when they arrive on duty. Well, that. So the tracks are to the south. No turbulence showing on route. Very full load. And that's maximum payload flight. 
Mm. We're still going down west. Yeah. Yeah, you're still flying. The flight crew used to spend a lot more time working on the flight plan for themselves. <laughs> Information about the passengers is being updated as they go through the boarding gate. There's a security system in operation to make sure the same passengers board the plane as check-in. When boarding is complete, a summary gives the final weight and balance for the aircraft. As the plane prepares for takeoff, the information network sends details about the flight and the passengers to Miami so that they can organize for its arrival in nine hours' time. To a modern airline, information in the air is just as important. Well, the impact of computers on the flight deck has been enormous. There has been literally a revolution in the way that planes are flown. At the heart of the instrumentation of a modern 747 is the Flight Management System, or FMS for short. It's run on a pair of onboard computers. At the moment, it's looking at the details of today's passenger and cargo load and comparing the figures with those on the final load sheet. But if that was all the FMS was used for, it wouldn't be very special. However, the FMS is also the navigational computer. It contains information about all the routes. Over land, the route consists of a number of so-called legs between radio beacons. The FMS looks up the details of these beacons in its database and tunes into them automatically. It uses signals from several beacons to calculate the position of the plane it feeds the course corrections directly to the autopilot. Over the sea, where there are no radio beacons, the FMS navigates using the onboard inertial guidance system. In this field, as in many others, the technology doesn't stand still. There's now a new generation of aircraft flying on these short and medium haul routes planes like the A310 Airbus and the 757. And to go with this new generation of aircraft, there's a new generation of advanced flight simulators. OK, Mike, we'll put in the position oh, it. Inside, DG the flight deck is an exact replica of the real plane. Bravo 21. The movements and displays are being driven by a dedicated mini-computer. Crews receive the majority of their training for the 757 on the simulator. Checks OK. And they soon realise that flying the 757 is a very different experience from their previous aeroplanes. For instance, most of the conventional instruments have been replaced by VDUs. But on a 757, the changes go much deeper. Positive climb, gear up. The flight management system is fully integrated into the flying systems. Not only does it control the navigation, it displays the route on a VDU screen. And at the same time, the FMS decides the altitude and so flies the plane fully automatically. There's one less person on the flight deck, no flight engineer. The performance of all the engineering systems is controlled and monitored by the computers, even in an emergency. The crew fly the plane through the FMS, and it has been suggested that their jobs are being de-skilled. The crews argue that using the FMS means less routine work, and so less pressure and less tiredness. They have more time to manage the plane, to look around and to fly. Speed brakes. Armed. Order brakes. You've chosen two. At the same time, the crew are still trained to fly the plane fully manually if necessary. The combination has led to an improvement in safety. Worldwide, the airline business is expanding, as more of us travel on business or consider exotic places like Miami for our holidays. 
but the far-flung nature of airline operation is in itself a problem. The information network has to stretch out to all the places that BA operates from. The ground operations at Miami, like those at Heathrow, are still scheduled centrally from London. And it's not just the ground operations. When you check in at Miami, the processing isn't done locally, but back in London. It's linked by a worldwide telecommunications network using satellite, cable and microwave facilities. Terminals in over 100 countries can access the system with a response time of two or three seconds. The network is expensive, but it makes sense in commercial terms to have all the information available centrally with easy access for everybody. However, as the business changes, so must the information network. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. I'm going to London? Yes. At Miami, BA is experimenting with personal computers in place of dumb terminals. With information like seat allocations computed locally, it's cheaper and quicker, and there are better displays. Also, information is readily available to local managers. The local network only communicates with London when necessary. But it's um, over the wing. There are plans to link all the North American operations together in one network and so improve the quantity and quality of information available to managers. It's all part of a trend. While the central database will be maintained, more and more intelligence and processing will be distributed around the network. BA is looking very carefully at the exact information support it needs. It has been argued that airlines in general have lost their place in the forefront of information technology. But now, airlines like BA realise that they must make their operations more efficient, that they must improve customer services, and to do that, they must have the best possible distributed information network. And now, back to our simulation of how modern methods might cope with the Torrey Canyon disaster. Mike, first of all, what are those modern methods? Well, the main method is to use aircraft to spray the oil with dispersant. And here we've simulated seven aircraft spraying during the day. Now, the model doesn't make recommendations, does it? So how does it help? Well, first of all, it allows us to track the oil at night when it's difficult to see. And it also allows us to use different combat strategies and see which are the most effective. Right. We're now 288 hours into our simulation. At this stage in real life, the, uh, the oil was all over those beaches. How are we doing now? That's right. Well, we still do have some oil on the beaches, but nowhere near to the extent in the previous one. Yes, I think, we can just make out, just down there, those red blobs are the oil, and it tells me over this side of the screen, that's 51 tonnes, that's a mere fraction of the 1,200 tonnes that was dispersed along the coast. How sure are you that this is an accurate prediction? Well, this system really represents state-of-the-art in oil spill modelling, and in this case we've used accurate data from the Met Office. However, the system is updated as research goes on in this area. So you're constantly fine-tuning it. Right. Of course, you've got a very expensive, very capable computer here. Would it work on a smaller system? Yes, in fact, SciCon are shortly to release a system which is based on a PC. And we're hoping that that will appear, appeal to harbour masters and port authorities. Good luck with that. Thank you very much, Mike. And you don't have to be a harbour master to run uh, slick on a micro. Now, of course, it's not in the same league as the Psycon software, and it's not meant to be. But it does give you a chance to see if you could tackle similar sorts of problems, but on a much smaller scale. And because it's concerned with dramatic real-life incidents, it's become very popular with pupils in schools. Well, that's just about all for this week's programme. Next week is the last Micro Live with a specially extended edition starting a little earlier at 6.15. We'll be looking at the whole future of computing, both the research leading towards faster, more intelligent computers and some of the effects that computers could have on our lives. But until then, good night. <laughs>